Another panelist, Anthony, um, an advisor here at AMO, joining us currently just um, going through some technical difficulties with Zoom, but he should be popping in shortly. So if another panelist jumps on, um, it is Anthony, it is our advisor, and he will be joining us. Um, but without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. And actually, there's Anthony as we speak. So it looks like Anthony is just going to go ahead and get his um, audio set up here. Uh, happy to see your face, Anthony. Happy to see your face, Rod, Blanca. Um, and thank you everyone for joining. We are here to discuss the US healthcare system, um, specifically expectations versus reality. And here at AMO, you know, we are here to provide access to clinical experiences you know, all over the United States, um, whether in person or virtually from your own home. And we are really excited to you know, offer this to IMGs. My name is Ryan Flores. I have been with AMO now for just over seven years. I've helped thousands of medical students, medical professionals, just like those of you joining, find clinical experiences. And along the way, we've definitely encountered um, just some maybe misinformation or just some hesitation about what the US healthcare system is like. And us as advisors, we are here to guide you, to inform you about what you can expect on an AMO rotation, but how you can also prepare for an AMO rotation and coming to the US. And now how you can join us live and get um, medicine and practicing medicine online. So we're really excited to talk to you today about, you know, the U.S. healthcare system. Myself, I can give all the advice on what I know about the U.S. healthcare system and, you know, what my experience is. But, you know, we have two of our AMO ambassadors, two of our past visitors, Blanca and Rod here, to share their experiences um, doing a clinical experience through AMO, um, you know, during a difficult time with COVID, but still understanding um, they need to get their education and you know, need to deliver healthcare in, in such an important time. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce um, Rod and Blanca. I'll them introduce themselves, sorry, and I'll hand it over. Thank you so much, Ryan. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you and Britt and everybody at AMO for sponsoring this, this panel today. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Blanca Simon. I'm an international medical graduate from Spain and I currently matched uh, three weeks ago in the match 2021. And I'm here to talk about the expectations versus reality, really looking forward to it. Well, congratulations, Blanca, on that. Um, again, yeah, thanks guys for having this um, nice event. Um, I'm Brad Lahmoud. I'm originally from Jordan. I was studying in uh, Saudi Arabia. I'm also an international medical graduate, but I'm considered um, still a last year medical student. Um, in other words, an intern in our region, that's what they call me. So yeah, and I'm here to actually discuss about my expectations versus reality when I was um, doing my rotation through AMO. So can't wait to start. Definitely. And you know, thank you again both for joining. Um, we're, we're honored to have you here. And you know, I know both Rod and Blanca, you have had the luxury of sharing your experiences with hundreds of other medical students and, you know, joining us today on a Facebook event, you know, I'm so excited to just share your, you know, continue to share your stories and to really, you know, put a face to, you know, who and who, who is an AMO visitor and what is their ex expectation and what is their experience like? Now, I know the two of you have both had unique experiences, you know, within the last year um, and also leading up. So I kind of want to start from the beginning and Rod Blanco, you know, whoever wants to speak first, you know, just about your introduction to AMO and, um, you know, quote unquote, taking that leap of faith to do an experience with us and how we played a role in guiding you. Sure. So my personal experience with AMO, I knew about AMO because uh, I was attending Kaplan for two years for my USMLE preparation and AMO works with Kaplan. So I already knew that I had that opportunity when I needed US clinical experience. And when COVID hit, um, I had two rotations, but uh, unfortunately they were canceled. So I had to get more US clinical experience in my CV for my application. And I went uh, to AMO, you know, really, I really didn't know what to expect, but you know, it, it surpassed my expectations. I was, you know, assigned a coach from the very beginning and she held my hand throughout the process of applying, of getting all the paperwork done. And I did two rotations with AMO. One was an internal medicine cardiology 
outpatient experience in New York, and the other one was a nephrology experience outpatient in um, Baylor in Houston. So they were both uh, one month, and one was a uh, hands-on clinical experience, and the other one it was an observership, which we will talk about later on the differences and why each one one of one is better, or what are the advantages of each type of experience. So that was my experience. What about you, Rad? Yeah, so um, that, that sounded really uh, as fun. Actually, pretty much the same, except that the fact how I knew about AMA was through um, actually an Instagram ad. So just like scrolling my phone, um, just like any other day, tired after um, work at the hospital. And then I was like, are these guys like serious? Can I really be in the US in a, in very, in a very short time period? And I just like trusted the process. And I uh, was also assigned a coach as soon as I actually created an account. Um, my coach back in the time had uh, given me like a lot of um, options or a, an advisor. You start off with an advisor and then you get a coach. So um, I was really overwhelmed and messed up. I didn't really know, like I didn't have a, cre a clear path since I don't really have anyone in the U.S. So my, my advisor was like the eyes through which I can see. Um, so he gave me a lot of options and he was like telling me what are your specialties of interest and whatsoever and like what states you'd like to be in. So we ended up um, actually doing uh, two rotations. The first one was a dermatology rotation and the second one was a family medicine rotation and both were in Florida. It was such an exceptional experience. I learned a lot and I've said that before and I'm going to say it again, those two months equal like my whole year of um, internship it was really a lot of to adventure and experience and I'm really happy about it and I got like uh, introduced into the um, U.S. healthcare system very well so yeah we'll talk about that more yeah that's amazing and before I know Anthony we, we got you set up now with the mic and the video so we'll let you introduce yourself shortly but Rod and Blanca what I wanted to follow up with was two different experiences. Blanca, you know, you coming from the Kaplan courses already kind of familiar maybe with the basics of the U U.S. healthcare system. And Rod, yourself um, coming from um, as an IMG and as you said, kind of scrolling through Instagram in an ad, uh, maybe not as familiar with the U.S. healthcare system. Maybe um, the two of you can expand about what you knew about the U.S. healthcare system before you arrived or before you met AM Opportunities. Just to give our, our visitors um, on Facebook and on Zoom, an idea of just the unique experiences that you two bring coming into the experience. So my experience um, before rotating with AMO, I had a couple of clinical experiences, uh, So, but they were mostly inpatient. So they were at hospital-based settings and uh, with the attendings in the hospital. So, but again, I think that you can get as much clinical U.S. clinical experience. You will always find something new to learn about the U.S. healthcare system. It is so intricate and so hard to navigate that one, two, three months. It's you. You will always learn if you have more experience. So, the out. I was not familiar with the outpatient setting, and this is what I discovered with AMO, and. Um, it was very uh, enriching in my experience because I didn't think that the outpatient setting was such a big part of the U.S. healthcare system. Sometimes, you know, as doctors, we we associate doctors with hospitals, and that's it. And it's that's far from reality. And the outpatient setting, it is the basis of the U.S. healthcare system and where the patients usually go to. So this is like the bread and butter, what you see, the, the type of patients you, you're gonna, they, they go for follow-up for chronic diseases or for checkups. And this is what you will see as well in your day-to-day -day practice. So I experienced that. And as well, uh, we will talk about like, what can you do in your outpatient versus inpatient? But my discovery was the outpatient setting. What about you, Rad? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's also about the outpatient setting, actually. Um, I've chosen dermatology and family medicine because I knew that they really included the outpatient um, like setting itself. It, it was really nice that with AMO, I discovered that in reality, patients filter themselves through um, offices or outpatient clinics. And then if they really needed the hospital, then they'll go there. So in my previous experiences, like when I was in, in, in the kingdom and Saudi Arabia, um, all like patients will just go ahead directly to the hospital, like to the specialized doctor, to that kind of, you know, specialty and just 
and have themselves um, checked by them. Well, that's not really the case in the US. They really go through a primary physician and then uh, so forth, that physician will recommend um, like some other uh, physicians and through which they're gonna go and listen to their uh, primary care physicians. Like each hood or like each um, a group of people will be assigned a certain physician attending and then that attending will like be like directing them throughout the um, US healthcare system. Like what will, they, uh, what will they need? For example, in my dermatology clinic, I used to really see a lot of senior citizens who come in swing by for like some skin cancers who were, um, which were discovered by their primary physicians or like by chance. And they just recommended them to go to visit my attending uh, at the time. So that was really inspiring and really nice. It like shows how well of a developed healthcare system um, the US has. And actually it's an opportunity for me to learn more about it since I'm thinking of, you know, going and then, um, matching in a hopefully residency program later on. And also the atmosphere itself, it was like so friendly. I really didn't expect it to be so friendly. You can just see the medical director walking through the hospital, uh, smiling at you. You can just like shake hands or, I mean, not shake hands now, just like say hi <laughs> with the COVID. Um, but back in the time it was the shake hand um, and you can just like throw a chat with them. Everyone's pretty mellow and you just like melt in uh, through the system, just like cotton candy, as I've said. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's thank, it. thank you both for sharing that information. And you know, two two topics that come out of you know both of your experiences, which are really important, and we would definitely touch on, is the importance of outpatient experience in the U.S. as well as the importance of networking. Um, Rod, you you talk about seeing the medical director walk around, and we're definitely going to get get into that. But before we do, um, it's a great segue because as AMO advisors. You know, we definitely love to explain those benefits, um, the networking, the outpatient experience in the U.S., again, setting those expectations for what the U.S. healthcare system is like. And, you know, us as advisors, we, we want to guide, we want to give you the information. And, you know, Anthony, I know you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself earlier, so it's a great segue to, um, you know, just speak about yourself as an AMO advisor and the role that you play. And, you know, as we, as you introduce yourself, Maybe you can speak about um, your experience in the youth care, U.S. healthcare system as a patient, um, and maybe your family as patients or family and friends and what they experience. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. So, um, you know, everybody, my name is Anthony. I'm one of the clinical rotations advisors here at AMO, and basically, my job is to you know help you guys find the right rotations based off the information you give me, so that I can you know find you a good rotation that would suit your needs if you want to, you know, rotate in the U.S. Uh, to find that residency program that you would like to, you know, match into, or if you just want to stay in your home country and, you know, get some U.S. clinical knowledge. And uh, as Ryan mentioned, you know, I'm in the U.S., so I'm pretty familiar with the U.S. healthcare system. And not once when you go to get a checkup by your primary uh, care physician, that I go to a hospital. Um, majority of medicine here is practiced in clinics and you only really go to the hospital unless it's like a real emergency because you know that's the place they have all the resources, everything there is needed. But if you're just getting the checkup where, you know, just to see how you are, you go to the clinic first. So that's where majority of people go here if you wanna get standard medicine such as, you know, some specialties like internal medicine you go to the clinic first. So that's usually the, the first point of contact. And then as Rod mentioned, if you want to see that specialist, you go, you know, see that specialist in the hospital later on. Definitely. And, and Anthony, you bring up a really, really good point, um, just connecting Rod's story, where you mentioned at first you go to a clinic, you, you, you go into your primary care doctor. And Rod, you mentioned how you know, a lot of times during those primary care doctor visits, something may, you may find something by chance and the follow-up might not even directly be an immediate hospital visit, but it's okay. We're going to refer you to, um, you know, a gastroenterologist, for example, you know, um, you might want to speak with your insurance provider to find who is going to cover you. And then, you know, you make an appointment with that provider and typically that provider might also be at an outpatient facility do your initial test. And then if you know something comes back where you need to be admitted, um, that is when you might go to the hospital. So 
one thing that we experience here in the US healthcare system is a lot of steps that, be, that need to be taken to almost escalate a patient to the hospital setting. Um, but you know, I just wanted to kind of you know, talk about that and maybe Blanca and Rod, if you can share your experiences going between outpatient and inpatient um, you know, exposure types to you know, cater to the patient that the doctor's seeing. Yes, I wanted to touch base on that because I think the fact that I got two outpatient setting rotations was due to COVID. Um, you know, AMO also offers inpatient rotations and those provide different benefits than uh, the outpatient. But due to COVID, all of the inpatient rotations were canceled. So there were no hospital-based setting rotations. So we had to rely entirely on outpatient telehealth and research rotations, which all of them are offered by AMO and you have a wide variety of, of uh, programs and, and services you can choose from. And as uh, from like the outpatient versus inpatient, what I wanted to highlight is that even though you are you know, searching for an outpatient rotation, that doesn't mean that you're gonna get exclusive outpatient uh, you know, exposure. Most of the doctors in the outpatient setting some of them may have university-based affiliations or they also work at a university-based hospital. What does this mean? This means that uh, at some point during the week, they will have to go to the hospital. And you know, depending on how many uh, students or graduates are rotating at that current rotation, they may take you with, they may take you or all the, all the other students with them to see the inpatient setting. And this applies vice versa, meaning if it's an inpatient rotation, but the doctor also has a clinic, and he's going Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will most likely go with the doctor and experience the outpatient setting in the inpatient rotation. And that the ultimate point of this is that that will be reflected on your letter of recommendation. So if you're you know, looking for an outpatient, just you'll be aware that you may get both exposures and this is very important. Yeah, and I'd like to pick up the line where you said um, sometimes you can actually have both an outpatient and an inpatient experience, uh, Blanca. Just this was the case for me, uh, um, actually. In my dermatology rotation, my uh, attending would actually do about two to three uh, consultations at a hospital since he was actually the um, program director of uh, dermatology at the hospital he, he used to be at. And um, at the time, we had like two residents who were actually rotating with us, residents from the hospital itself, who were, one of them was an IMG actually. And I got the luxury of knowing the whole like, you know, pathway from that resident. And I'm really thankful about that. And um, we used to go like from an outpatient setting into an inpatient setting. And I have really learned the whole different um, atmosphere and how you actually deal with the patients in the hospital. And I've got like introduced into the, you know, uh, dictation process and the follow-ups and, you know, the progress notes and how they're developed. And also like since COVID happened midway in my rotations, I've got the um, luxury again to actually get entries into the tele telehealth. So my attending in the second rotation would actually do telehealth, talk to patients through FaceTime and um, can even get examined through the phone and keep in touch with them because Hence, that's what's important to keep in touch with your uh, primary healthcare physician, right? So I really learned a lot about that, how, you know, settings can be different and when things happen unexpectedly, how to actually uh, cope up with that. So we went from an outpatient into an inpatient and then I've experienced telehealth. So that was a whole like world of experiences for me. Thank you both for sharing. And you know, I think what, what, I, what I'm hearing is you're busy during these experiences. And you are really immersed into the US healthcare system, which you know, is the goal of AMO, right? To provide that access, to provide that opportunity. And whether it's in-person, whether it's virtual, you know, Rod, as, as you experienced during um, you know, the pandemic, um, you're getting what you put into it. You, know, you are able to really explore the system and dive into the system with your attendings or with those that you meet. And you know, I think what's important here, and I saw a question come in about letters of recommendation, and I definitely want to cover that maybe before we go further because I know it's very important to um, those listening. And you know, I think I want to start with um, Anthony here. And Anthony, you know, from your perspective, you know, as AMO um, gets questions about letters of recommendations and the experiences we offer, you know, what is the advice that we give as an AMO advisor? And then we can kind of 
go into the experiences of Blanca and Rod and the letters of recommendation from their perspective. Yeah, so I feel like a lot of mis inconsistencies about letters of recommendation is that it always has to be on a hospital letterhead or, you know, or at a hospital. It's like, it's not the case. It, it really doesn't matter, you know, where it is, but the quality of the letter, because it basically reflects on what you did exactly in that rotation. So, or, you know, who the person who wrote it. So it doesn't really, you know, have to be on that hospital letterhead. People aren't going to just be like, oh, this is a hospital letterhead you know, let's just, you know, have them match an interview. It's like, no, like it's about what the actual experiences you did and how you can kind of show that that's what something that you're, you, you could prove to yourself and prove to them that you're, you know, you're more than capable of, you know, matching into these programs. And that's really what it, you know, boils down to. Definitely. And Anthony, you know, talking about the letter of recommendation and when we speak with students, um, you know, I know a lot of times we talk about the letter and, you know, what is important in the letter. And a lot of times that letterhead comes up. And, you know, from your perspective, you know, we, we talk about the content of the letter and scheduling a call with an AMO advisor to discuss with um, the visitor, you know, what's important to them. How does that play into the letter that they are? Yeah, so, you know, what really comes down to it is that um, basically we talk about the different you know, experiences that you can handle, um, you know, what's going to be there. And that's really is what's going to be written on there. Um, so that's not like, it's not about where it is. It's about, you know, what you've done. And, uh, you know, that's, and it's really what it comes down to is just, you know, what have you did? And that's going to be what's exactly written on there. Yeah, definitely. And it's really about what, you know, everyone has different goals. Everyone has, I should has the same goal to strengthen their education, to match into residency, but we all get there differently. And as advisors, you know, speaking with us helps us guide you into the rotations. And then, you know, we have our ambassadors like Rod and Blanca who have, you know, actually done the experiences to talk about their experience as well. So, you know, um, you know, both of you can just touch on the letters that maybe you've earned and, you know, how you achieved those and how you became comfortable, um, you know, talking with the doctors about those letters. Yes, so, you know, letters of recommendation, they are, you know, when you buy an experience that, you know, they, they say, like, you will earn a letter of recommendation. And, and I just want to point out the word earn. I mean, I just want to highlight that, like, you will get a letter, but it d depends, the, the quality of the letter, as Ryan and Anthony stated, is what really matters. And you may get a letter, but you are looking for a strong letter of recommendation, and that is earned by, you know, being part of the team, acting as a resident, acting as a, uh, a medical student from a U.S. you know uh, medical school, so you need to really earn the letter and a strong letter. And as Anthony said, the outpatient setting will give you a strong letter because doctors have affiliations and they have university-based affiliations. Even though you have not been in a hospital, you will get those in a letterhead and. Um, it is based on the personal experience the doctor has with you and how much, how much trust they have uh, deposited in you that will be reflected and all the activities you have done with them, whether that is an inpatient or outpatient setting. And yeah, I just want to point out the fact that, you know, if you have a letter, it says that you will get one, it doesn't mean it's going to be a good one and you will want a strong letter. So work for it, you will earn it. Exactly. Thanks a lot, um, Blanca, for um, stressing on the word earn, because um, it was pretty much for me, it's this, it's like um, on my very first day, my attending was like asking me, what are you expecting out of this rotation? So I made it clear that um, I'm, I'm expecting for my, you know, like soft skills to be, you know, improved, my communication skills to know about the healthcare system, and of course to um, have an um, LOR. You know, like us medical students sometimes are kind of shy-ish to like mention the LOR since it's kind of some work for our attending to do, and we know our attendings are just so busy to give us a part of their time, but he still respected that and he actually told me, so I was like, I'm expecting an LOR. So what do I have to do so I can guarantee an LOR? I was like, well, Rod, you just have to show me progress and be a medical, a good medical student. So I actually made sure that um, I am doing progress, 
like halfway my rotation, I'll just go, for example, like after two weeks, I'll set an appointment with my attending and just ask him or her about how am I doing? Like, um, am I doing everything right? Is everything uh, going as planned? Um, am I showing progress? Since he wanted me to like, you know, show progress. And when he gives me like a homework, I'll make sure that on the next day I'll be pretty much prepared for the topic he or she had uh, given me to discuss with them. And, um, you know, some wonderful things can happen if you really showed that you're really interested. As I was not expecting to actually get into um, touching with, you know, in touch with um, residents at the hospital and them allowing me to do some uh, certain procedures because they've seen me that I, that I merely meet the um, like standards and I really know what I'm doing. So they were like, go ahead, you were good for that and just do it. So that really was really nice for me. And um, it really reflected back on my LOR. It was really authentic and um, very like specified to what I've actually showed my attending. So that would be really a very nice way to guarantee an LOR. Earn it. I think that's, that's so important is that the physicians, the attendings, the hosts, the institutions that, you know, that we partner with that are within our network are available to write letters of recommendation. And you know, I think we both, I think you two both stressed on the, the most important word, which is earn. But mm -hmm. you know, we can guarantee that those letters are offered, but it's up to the student, the visitor to earn that letter. And there's a lot that goes into to earning that letter. Now, Rod, you mentioned that two weeks in, I think you set an appointment with your attending to discuss that letter of recommendation. Now, um, we have our coaches who will check in with you periodically and specifically about that letter, you know, say if you didn't set up an appointment. Um, and I'm not sure, Rod, did you happen to hear from your coach um, about the letter and then feel comfortable checking in? Or did you feel comfortable kind of leading up knowing the coaches were there to help you and you are already comfortable? So actually, I'd really like to mention uh, something before the uh, letter of recommendation. It's that... Um, you know, at my time, the pandemic happened. So, um, you know, COVID and whatnot threw out my first rotation. So I got an email from my second uh, rotation um, institution and they were like telling me, we're really sorry due to the pandemic that's happening right now, uh, your, your rotation has been canceled. So like in no time, my coach just contacted me and told me like, don't, don't freak out, we, we got your back and it's totally cool. He has given me a couple of options and got my back covered. And like um, the second rotation, I mean, luckily was like had a difference in prices. It was a little bit cheaper. So I got a refund too. <laughs> it was just like so smooth. Um, I'm really happy because I had my uh, back covered with AMO. That was, that is what really counts. Like you have, it's like an army behind the scenes, behind the screens that really, um, you know, take care of you. So um, regarding the um, LOR, uh, my coach told me that you're going to most likely get an LOR, but you have to really work for it. It's not like you're not gonna attend the working hours you're supposed to do. It's not like you're not gonna be following what your attending is wanting, wanting you to do and you're still gonna get an LOR. So you really have to do what you're asked to do and just you know, follow what your attending wants you to do. And then that hopefully will actually make you guarantee an, um, an LOR. It's not that hard. Um, it's not really a freaky you know, topic. It's really mellow. And, and you just, you know, um, expectation was um, I'm overwhelmed about the LOR. It's really hard to get. I can't talk to my attending about it. In reality, it's the total opposite. The, um, yeah, attending was pretty mellow. I just mentioned it the very first day and he was super cool about it. And um, he even asked me, do you want it like to be directed to a, a certain residency program or like as a resident um, in general? So it was that um, specific and uh, genuine and authentic. And that's amazing. And, and really, you know, those, you, you ended there with genuine and authentic and those are so important to that letter and to the residency directors that come across your letter. You know, they, they can look at your CV, they can look at your resume and see the experiences, the research that you had, but they don't get to know you. And that letter is so important to get to know, you know, the person behind the resume and from a doctor's perspective. And it, it really is your chance to shine. Um, and Blanca, I know you've had experience with multiple letters. And um, if you wanna talk on yours as well and the expectations and the reality behind it, yeah, actually, 
Blanca has mentioned the thing before that marks are not everything. So I really like that. It's also the US clinical experience with an LOR. So yeah, go ahead, Blanca. Yes, so LORs are a big part of your application. Uh, they are the second, if not the most important thing in your application. It shows, especially for international medical applicants, that you are familiar with the US healthcare system, that uh, US doctors trust you, they know that you can navigate the system, that you can excel in their system. And a good letter of recommendation should have personal experiences with the doctor. Um, they, like you have been collaborating with them, assisting lectures, conferences. If they ask for volunteer speakers for a morning report, go ahead and do it. And, um, you know, it's, it's scary. Of course, it is scary. You are competing against an army of U.S. Uh, doctors that have been trained in the U.S. You're coming from uh, abroad and you're trying your best and they know that. And, you know, if you do a decent job, that is going to be outstanding and that will be reflected. Also, a lot of um, students and graduates ask me, can I do research as well? The answer is, it depends on the relationship you build with your attending, with your, you know, with your uh, advisors at AMO, they will let you know, for example, if they're, um, the doctor will tell you if they have any, you can ask if there's any research going ongoing in the department, or if you find an interesting case that you wish to write a case report on, ask and, and be communicative tell your doctor, ask for advisors, uh, your AMO advisors, is it okay if I ask for a case report? Do you think they'll, you know, they'll let me write it out and they'll uh, help me with, the, uh, you know, submitting it to the journal and use the tools you have to get advice. At the end of the day, you will, f you will have a subjective feeling on how the doctor will respond and how supportive he or she is towards you as an applicant. And, most of the time, if not all of the time, they're extremely supportive because they know how hard it is for international medical graduates to get a residency position in the US and they will help you. And it is important that you maintain contact with those doctors throughout your, your process because you never know uh, if you need anything else from them. In my case now, you know, working on the, on the medical training license, I still need more character reference forms from doctors that I did rotation. So it's not the end. Uh, just if you get the letter, it's not the end. You may need more of their help during you know, paperwork. So my advice is always, you know, keep in touch with them and uh, let them know of your progress. This is very important. If you publish something new, just let them know. This is what I have done in the past year since we met. Or, or this is where I have matched, if you, if you match. So it is important to maintain contact and be proactive in your rotations to get the most out of them. And that is my experience with letters of recommendation. I see, I saw that there was a question, um, you know, the, the doctor that writes the letter will upload that letter to ERAS. So you will just send it to them, they will sign it and you will, you know, send your credentials and they will upload it to the ERAS. So no worries about that. Yeah, and actually, my, yeah, yeah. sorry, actually, my attending has mentioned that he was like introducing me into the whole like match system as um, I was surprised that I was expecting to be alone, like as a medical student on my rotation. But I, in reality, I had two more medical students. <laughs> that was pretty nice for me in my second rotation, because one of them was like halfway, um, you know, submitting the papers and the whole like paperwork uh, you've done Blanca successfully. <laughs> so my attending was telling me about, you know, the whole ERS system and that, yeah, um, he'll be uploading the letter of recommendation later on down the road when I'm mm -hmm. applying for a residency program. So that would yes, be really it's, smart. It's not very complicated. It is very intuitive. And uh, the, the fact, as you mentioned, Brad, that you wrote it with other medical students from the U.S., it is important that you learn from them ask questions, be extremely proactive because, you know, we come from a different healthcare system where you do physical examinations in a, in a certain way. It's not going to be the same in the U.S. Just be, you know, learn and ask questions and, you know, it, and, you, and you will make mistakes and that's all right. And you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes because you will learn from them and they know that. So just, you know, try to uh, immerse yourself and kind of uh, be part of, of the team. Yeah, absolutely. 
Exactly. Yeah, actually, it's the time now. It's our time to make mistakes because we're just students, right? <laughs> exactly. And actually, Blanca, we not only like became like super like kind of best friends, me and me, the other two <laughs> um, medical students, we actually have practiced uh, doing the, um, let me say, former uh, step two uh, clinical skills um, mm -hmm. exams together, like during yeah. our lunch breaks. It was really yeah, absolutely. Like, you never know where you're going to get, you know, study partners from it. Exactly. And if they're studying for step one or step two and you you want to you want a study partner and, and you know of that person that you rotated with, you you ask and you can study together. I mean, it's mm -hmm. never a bad thing to make more connections. Uh, most likely the opposite. Absolutely. Definitely. And I think, oh, sorry, Anthony, go on. I was going to say that, you know, I, I can't stress enough when I talk to visitors, it's that you know, you're here to network too. Like you're not going to just attend the rotation and get that experience and go home. It's like, no, you're going to stay in contact with the doctor. You're going to meet other, you know, fellow students and visitors who, you know, you can stay in contact with and, and network such as, you know, how Blanca and Rob did, you know, you're here to make friends and connections and basically help each other out because that's what doctors do. Uh, I haven't met a doctor yet who hasn't referred me to somebody else that they can help me with, you know, you know, a particular case or, you know, a diagnosis. It's that, you know, everyone knows each other and that's basically going to help you is, you know, networking is the, probably the, one of the biggest you know, under, you know, under uh, estimated things that you can do here. It's that not only get that experience, but meet new people. And they're, they're not only going to, you know, give you that experience, but they're going to help you, you know, meet other new people. And, you know, next thing you know, you're meeting a bunch of program directors and you're shaking hands with them. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're matching into their program because you knew somebody. It's a whole community. It's like mm -hmm. you have your back card. And, I and all doctors have, yeah. they all have yeah. a Rolodex. They all know <laughs> each other. <laughs> exactly. And that's the beautiful thing with an AMO rotation is, is that networking ability. And, you know, Anthony, you bring up a really interesting perspective from the patient side in the U.S. You know, when I go to my doctor and again, an internist, primary care, but, you know, I ask my doctor for rec referrals and recommendations because it's within my network, right? I can go to my insurance network and they can select, you know, a, doc a list of a hundred doctors, but I'm going to go to my actual network, my actual doctor and ask for their recommendations and then follow up and check is it covered? And if it's not, maybe I'll ask for another network. But I bring up the extended network because, you know, we're, we're discussing networking with physicians, but also AMO after your rotation. You know, Rod, Blanca, you are AMO ambassadors. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful program that I believe the both of you helped start. And it wasn't, you know, it's, it's after the experience that I think um, past visitors, visitors think, okay, I've used AMO and I'm done. And that's not the case because we're here to provide that access, that opportunity, and along the way, connect you with your coaches, connect you with your doctors. Both of you brought up the ERAS system and the doctors being familiar with that system. You know, in the past, we've certainly had students who may have lost contact with their doctor, but they always have a resource in AMO to connect with their coach and say, hey, I'm having trouble connecting with my doctor. Um, can you put me in touch? And that's, you know, kind of the coaching, you know, the coaching services we want to have is to help you after the rotation as well. Um, Blanca, Rod, can you, can you just dive into maybe the experiences you've had as a, you know, working with your coach after the rotation, as well as the ambassador program and how that extended network um, with the doctors, but with AMO has benefited you? So I think I'm, um, what I feel is that when you are, have been helped by, in this case, my AMO coach, the AMO team, I think it is only fair that you give back to the community that has helped you. And this is what I signed up for when I signed up for the ambassador uh, experience and, and, and this uh, with Rod and, and the other ambassadors. I, I think that we can give an inside perspective on our experience and each, each of us has a different experience. So it is important that everybody that wants to you know, uh, buy an experience knows what they're getting themselves into and getting genuine, genuine uh, recommendations from people that have done. It's not the same if you're recommending something you haven't tried yourself. And giving back because you know we can do these uh, Facebook lives and in Instagram live videos, but we usually have we're in contact with everybody, everyone that is asking us through you know social media. We're very happy to help and provide feedback, always honest feedback. 
And it is important that uh, you know that you won't be alone throughout the process. And this is what the AMO coaches uh, are doing and AMO advisors. If any kind of question and also paperwork, which is very underrated, and it is a big part of all processes, uh, match cycle, AMO rotations, anything. It, it involves a lot of paperwork. And this is something that it can be stressful and it can it put off, it can you know put you off and people like, no, no, I don't want to get myself into the paperwork. But it is easier than it looks. And especially if you have you know a coach and advisor that is guiding you through every step of the way and let you if there is any kind of problem, they will help you. And until it is not solved, they will they will not move on without you. And it is important that you know that you know, we need to know how to figure out the paperwork. This is a big part of adult life, medical, you know, in, in the medical system and not medical system. And my experience with the coaches is, is always, is, is a positive experience. I, I, I did have some questions throughout the rotations and I asked them and they were happy to help very, very fast uh, responses. And, you know, and my, my general feeling in, in general, not in just uh, US clinical experiences that you have to give back to your community in the form, if it is just, you know, sharing your experience or, you know, volunteering, any sort of action that, you know, will help other people that are achieving or they're in, in the pros, in the same process you were a year ago, two years ago, 10 years ago, it is important that, you know, they know that they have a, a net that they can fall into and, you know, someone will catch them. That's pretty beautiful. Um, thanks, Blanco, for mentioning um, the whole thing. Yeah, actually, it's pretty much the same for me. Uh, but I really wanted to uh, stress on a thing that, yeah, paperwork can be really overwhelming. As I've seen some of the questions, one one was asking, can we really? Uh, does it really take a lot of time? For how long? Or how um, like how early should I apply for a program? So as, as I've mentioned earlier, I was just like scrolling uh, through Instagram, and they find an advertisement for um, uh, that was talking about AMO. I created an account and um like literally i was done with the paperwork and i've accomplished or fulfilled all uh, required papers in about only a month like everything so it can be that fast like in other if you were all on your own uh you would have to uh, probably apply like six months ahead or even a year ahead to get an secure a spot a seat for you so that was really um, so worth it for me, since I really don't know, um, you know, anyone over there and I don't really have, you know, any back backup. So AMO was like, you know, the, the family, my, it's like um, my family uh, away from, you know, home overseas. And my coach got my back uh, throughout my rotation, you know, asking about the, the pandemic that was a surprise to me. I was not expecting that at all. And um, he got me covered and he got me another rotation. And then as Blanca said, um, it's really nice to um, have this, uh, you know, to give something in return. So they were really kind to me. They were really helping me. So I was thinking of how, how can I like um, give back? How can I contribute to this, you know, medical um, uh, community? So my coach was telling me that you can actually be an AMO ambassador and share and share your experience with other medical students, international medical students from all around the world. And not only inter inter international medical students, but also um, US uh, medical graduates. As uh, one of the questions was asking as well, that is it only available for IMGs or US um, residents? It's for everyone. Actually, both of my, um, like the, the other two medical students, they were US residents who are rotating with me. So yeah, it's for um, everyone, all medical students all around the world. Um, so yeah, after I finished my rotation, I have become an AMO ambassador. I'm really happy about this, volunteering, sharing my experience with everyone. I was not expecting to get um, like a certificate of appreciation and I've gotten that and I really, really um, appreciate this. So thanks a lot, you guys at AMO. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. And, you know, for everyone listening and everyone here, you, know, you can be the next ambassador, you know, sharing mm -hmm. your experience and your reality, just like Rod and Blanca. And, you know, make sure if you do, you know, um, speak with an advisor or you know, sign up for a rotation, ask about our ambassador program. We're more than happy to share, you know, share the program with you. You know, I'm sure Rod and Blanca would love to speak with, you know, future ambassadors themselves. Um, but, you know, thank you both for sharing those experiences. I, I know we brought up the paperwork and, um, you know, again, it, when, sometimes when you go on our site, you see all the programs, you see the paperwork, it's like, whoa, I, hold on. <laughs> it, 
it's scary. And, and, exactly. I, and myself are here. You know, we are here as advisors before you ever, you know, pay any money to us. You know, we're not here to, to sell you a program. We are here to listen to you. We are here to advise you. We're here to find out where does AMO fit in your timeline and how can we help you achieve your goal of becoming a doctor? Um, you know, I know we could talk on so many different topics, you know, for, for hours. And, um, you know, as we kind of wrap up here, I do want to leave maybe five minutes for just some questions that have gone unanswered. But before we do that, um, Anthony, Rod, Blanca, you know, is there any topics that maybe we didn't cover yet that you wanted to just go over about expectations in reality? I think one of the things that I wanted to mention was that uh, when you select a rotation, you're usually assigned one doctor. And then the question is, so I'm assigned one doctor, am I going to rotate with one doctor only? And the answer is no. Again, uh, it all depends on your networking skills. And you know, a month is a long time for you to get plenty of US clinical exposure at one place only. And you know, that place is the doctor is not the only person working at that place. If that be a inpatient at hospital or at the outpatient setting, it is easier if you're in a hospital to meet other doctors. Nonetheless, outpatient settings also, you know, clinics have multiple doctors seeing patients at the same time. So be adventurous, ask for, you know, if the if it's an outpatient cardiology and neurology clinic, you know your Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays with the cardiologist, and then you go with the neurologist Tuesdays and Thursdays just to see, you know, the different kinds of profiles of patients they see, and who knows, maybe you will get two letters out of it. So maximizing, you know, the profit out of one U.S. clinical experience, one month. So my, uh, my advice is that, you know, be curious, be uh, just ask questions and explore the setting you're rotating at, and you will never know what you will find, and maybe you will get more than what you're expecting. In my case, that was that was a case. I got um, one more letter, and you know, I asked for research, uh, and they were more than happy to help me uh, do like a case report uh, alongside all of my my former uh, medical graduates that were rot rotating with me. It was a you know teamwork effort, and I think it is important to stress out that. If any rotation that you do is gonna be a teamwork effort and it is important to you know, be respectful of your team workers and help them and they will help you and just work together to get the most out of that rotation, either if it, that's for you and for them. So just wanted to touch on that. That's pretty a very important point, um, Danke. You pointed out there. Actually, uh, the same happened with me. Um, I was assigned to one attending, and sometimes some other attendings will just pass by, swing by, see their uh, other patients. Um, some of them are like subspecialists. For example, in dermatology, we had a most surgeon, which is considered um, a subspecialty of dermatology. Um, I actually have gotten introduced to her, and uh, she really liked me, and she gave me her contacts, and uh, she was keeping me. She's still keeping me in up to date with whatever she's doing and conventions uh, that are coming up. She really makes sure that I, um, you know, like uh, engage with her and them. And also in my second rotation, I was introduced to another, uh, my family uh, physician uh, had another friend who was an ER physician attending who comes from the hospital swings by every now and then. We actually got two um, LORs from uh, like, each of them. So one from a primary um, healthcare attending and the second was from the ER attending. So it, it can actually happen by being, as Blanca said, like curious and like asking the, the right questions. And if you're given like any homeworks, you should really do them. So um, that was really a very important part. And also um, one of the things I was not expecting that it was as easy as it was, is um, sharing my culture, like for, from where I come from, about my religion, um, because you know my religion uh, requires us to like pray five times a day. So I was like worried about how am I gonna practice this over there? Is it going to be pretty mellow or was it, what is it going to be like? And I was surprised that everyone showed really interest in, what I'm, uh, wh where I come from, about my culture, about my religion and everything. And even one of the medical assistants, um, I'm really thankful for her. Um, she um, like gave me a place to actually practice my um, you know, prayers and um, not, be, not to feel like weird or something. So it was pretty mellow and you should never worry about that. It's very multicultural. Um, a lot of people from different places, they just 
when it comes to medicine, they all just melt down. It's just like one family and everyone cares for everybody. And it's really nice. <laughs> And then that's such a such an important word. And you know, Rod, thank you for sharing um, you know that and just the experience you had. You know, with the cultural differences and you know how AMO, our doctors, our network of doctors, you know, play into that that word family. And you know, that's what what we are. You know, we are all family here. We we want to provide the access, provide the opportunity to you know future doctors. You know, whether it's here in the U.S., whether it's back home in your home country, and it's, it's it is a beautiful thing. Um, I did, did want to cover a couple of questions um, just before we wrap up. And I think, Rod, this is a really good one for you to answer. Um, I wanted to know how many hours a day do we need to invest in a telerotation? Um, mm -hmm. We do have a couple of different types of telerotations, virtual experiences. If you're on our website, there are direct patient focused virtual rotations where you do interact in real time with patients while the doctor is either in the room or on a virtual setting. Um, and then there's kind of these educational research-based virtual experiences that can be hosted by physicians or institutions. Now, Rod, you did have the luxury of doing some virtual rotations with us. Um, maybe if you can just um, highlight just the hour commitment or what one can expect. So um, actually it was a telehealth, um, uh, a, live, a live rotation. Yes. It was, yeah, but um, since, you know, COVID happened, so most patients couldn't really reach the clinic and some of them just got like symptoms, so they were not really allowed to enter the office. So um, it's really pretty much, um, if it was a virtual rotation, then the luxury of that is you choose the hours you want to join in and you may uh, be in good terms with your physician or attending, your preceptor. You make them know what, what is the right time for you and what is not. And um, you just like set a, a, a specific like syllabus with them, and that'll be uh, you know it. For me, it was like um, like in, from eight in the in the morning until like five p.m. Uh, for example, we have like two patients who are going to come into the office, and for the other um, telehealth rotation or uh, telehealth um, you know uh, appointments, it'll be like four to five. So it's not really that long. Sometimes it would just take about like. 20 minutes from the physician yeah. or attending to, um, you know, finish a telehealth uh, with the patient, especially if it was, uh, you know, a new patient. If it was like a follow-up or something, then it would take way less time. And um, it's like really a very nice experience. It's like, um, as one of the preceptors said previously, you touch patients in a different way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can even learn more since you really are uh, dedicated and you really, um, are like in a microscopic view of everything. You know, sometimes you can, you know, um, wander off on your phone, scrolling or something, searching a topic while in the, uh, you know, office. But having this, it's it's really, in my opinion, will lessen that thing um, a lot. You're gonna have to, you know, focus really with your um, attending. Definitely. So, yeah. and, and I think you brought up a couple of really important facts, you know, seeing um, different procedures from a different angle and also having the luxury of being online while the doctor's at Questions. Two, you know, very unique and important parts of virtual learning, telehealth learning, telemedicine. Um, you know, as COVID has kind of extended, uh, you know, the the telehealth, the virtual has really developed over the course. And you know, there are ways to practice medicines. There are ways to touch a patient virtually, and that's what you can expect to learn in these virtual rotations. How can I practice medicine over a virtual setting? And for if you want to become a doctor, sorry, Rod, um, that's going to be important, but I know you want to say something, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it can actually be something to um, further strengthen your, um, you know, strength, uh, your CV or your, uh, you know, like uh, abilities. It's like you're pretty much uh, familiar with the virtual medicine in general, like doing telehealth, virtual rotations, because at some point, just like what we're, what we're experiencing right now, um, the pandemic, you're going to have to con connect with your patients through, um, you know, something that's virtual. And actually that's one of the procedures that's happening back in the kingdom. Uh, they're having those applications where you actually have to learn how to contact your patients through these, um, you know, uh, virtual methods. So I really appreciate that in, in the, um, uh, my US clinical experience, introducing myself into telehealth and the whole, yeah. you know, virtual rotations um, experience. It's really a nice thing. It can actually boost your uh, CV. Is that your and question? it sounds like a skill that you can already apply back home and you have experience that you can give insight that might not be seen already. So. 
So thank you for, for mentioning that. Absolutely. Um, well, I know we're, you know, we're kind of here on time. I know there are some questions that are still outstanding here. Um, I do believe we have covered most of them on the virtual rotations, um, but I don't want to keep anyone, you know, here any longer. So I did post in the chat um, a personal meeting link to contact any of our AMO advisors, myself, Anthony. Um, we have a few other advisors who are also um, online daily, as well as our email address. So anyone online on, on Zoom here, please feel free to reach out to us on Facebook. Feel free to send us messages, comments. We're more than happy to connect. Um, you know, the, as we end here, uh, I'll just kind of hand it over to our three other guests and see if they have any parting words. I just uh, want to thank everybody for joining in today. It was an absolute pleasure. Again, if you have any questions, you can ask our advisors, or if you have questions for Rad or for me, let them know and they'll get, get to us and we will get back to you. I mean, it is a pleasure always to help and help you achieve your, your goals, your professional goals, and uh, you just you know be kind to one another and best of luck to everybody that's pursuing US uh, medical uh, residency. Thanks a lot, Blanca. And um, yeah, I just want you to know, uh, to tell you guys that you should trust the process because I was myself so um, hesitant about, you know, choosing my rotation and going through the whole process. I was still, you know, overwhelmed and stuff, but it's really worth it. Trust the process and you will, your your re the reality is going to outbeat your expectations 100%. Guaranteed, I promise. You can always contact me through um, Instagram if you want. Can I share my Instagram account with them? Uh, yeah. If you feel okay. comfortable around, please feel free. <laughs> yeah, I'll just write it in the chat box. And um, there you go. So, um, yeah, um, just trust the process, pursue your dream, and join our um, American journey. <laughs> Thank you, Rad. Now go ahead. I think it went to panelists, so I'll send it to the attendees as well. I'm sorry. Okay, perfect. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ryan. Thanks a lot for having this event. It really means a lot. I would really appreciate such a thing, um, such like to listen to such a thing before actually uh, booking my rotations. It really um, reinforces me and um, gives me a lot of motive if um, I had the, the luxury of this, um, you know, such an event before my rotation. So hopefully this will benefit a lot of medical students out there who are wanting to proceed into the US healthcare medical system. I mean, we, could, we wouldn't be here without you. And, you know, we couldn't host this event without you. So thank you for having us. Thank, oh, you, thank you so much. And thank you a lot for Blanca. Blanca's like, she's now super busy with a lot of paperwork <laughs> and, you know, being a new resident and stuff. And she still squeezed in some time for us. Thanks a lot for that, really. It's my pleasure. I mean, all, all anytime, I'm just happy to help. And, you know, everybody, I think if I'm capable of getting into residency, anybody can. And it's just, right. you know, never lose your focus and just work for it. And it, it'll, it'll come to you and you will get what you, what you worked for. I like that. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, any, any last words, um, you know, just for those who are interested, you know, speaking with an advisor or maybe hesitant about speaking with an advisor? Yeah, everyone. I mean, don't hesitate to reach out to us. I always make my time available all the time. So if you have any questions, it is free just to get free advice from us. It is part of the experience. You don't have to pay anything until you want to reserve. So please reach out to me. Um, I'm always available on the weekends as well if you have questions or if you want to schedule a call I make myself available all the time. And you know, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I won't bite you. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm here to help you. Exactly, very helpful actually. Well, thank you everyone again, Blanca, Rod, Anthony. It's truly been a pleasure. You know, I hope we can do this again. And you know, just best of luck to both of you. Blanca, good luck. I, I know you're staying busy. Rod, you as well. And I'm sure we'll see those faces again soon. Thank Definitely. you so much, Ryan and Anthony. And thank you everyone for attending. Again, we really hope this, this was beneficial. And myself and Anthony, we, we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.